Our first speaker is the Marketing and PR Ambassador and Vice Chair at the Institute of Directors in London. And tonight, she will share with us social media hacks for businesses, membership organizations, and us as individuals. So we can get all the insights that she has applied at the IOT and also during her career over the last 20 years. Please welcome to the Suarez stage, our first speaker, Vanessa Dalbusco. Thank you so much. That's a lovely intro, Sonia. I'm so pleased to be here. And yeah, Toastmasters have been absolutely um, fantastic during the preparation for this event. So thank you. And it's so nice to see new faces and some old friends as well. So thank you for joining as well. So as Sonia mentioned, I'm Vanessa Del Busco, marketing consultant by day and marketing and PR ambassador at IOD and the vice chair. I specialize in social media and content. I've got quite a bit of content to get through this evening. So I'm sorry if I go fast, but the slides will be available via a link that Sonia will share in the chat at the end. And also we've got the recording as Sirachai um, mentioned on YouTube and Facebook. So um, what I'm gonna share is not definitive. I'm just sharing things that have worked for me. Um, so, you know, social is about telling stories and communicating your business benefits to attract potential clients and fans so you can grow. So the result is that you can raise your profile, attract inbound leads and develop a personal brand. You're most welcome to ask questions throughout just by popping it in the chat. And I'm not sure whether we can hear, but raise your hand if you have a social media strategy for your brand or for your club. Great, Surachai, great. That's great to see. Great to see some. Okay, fantastic. Well, hopefully you'll get something out of tonight. If not, do let me know and I'll amend my presentation for next time. Okay, so tonight I'll cover social, why do social media, different platforms that are available, paid advertising, landing pages, organic, only LinkedIn because of time and video. Um, so on to this one. So why do social media? Because everybody is on it. More than half the world is on social media. These stats are from June 2020. No surprise, Zoom is number two. Definite sign of the times with the lockdown happening there. But we're still here, which is great. Um, and then I know this slide is a bit blurry, but basically social media connects us with the world and during lockdown usage went up. So there's no more physical knocking on doors. Now your door knocking is digital. You might think, oh, I don't wanna do that. You know, Well, LinkedIn, in my view, is the best way to prospect for new customers now and build relationships. So I'm gonna show you what I have found is work, uh, what I have found works. Um, obviously there's thousands of social media platforms out there. You cannot do all of them. You've got 71% of UK adults on Facebook, 51% on LinkedIn, 42% on Insta and 24% on Twitter. I recommend you choose a platform and stick to it because, oh, did I miss a slide here? No, I don't think I did. Oh, no, I didn't. Um, choose a platform and stick to it because you dilute your efforts if you try to do all the platforms. So just choose one or two or maybe three and concentrate your efforts and that way you'll see better results, I believe. So we're gonna talk about ad creative now. Here are three examples of really famous ads. Not all of us have a Honda budget, let's face it, none of us do probably, but social media is not television. So marketing and ads have changed. We no longer even have to watch them. You can create amazing results with social media on a shoestring budget and for free with organic if you get the mix right. The best social ads, I believe, aim to grab the user's attention in a split second and make them want to know more. In social media, you're trying to get their attention to take action right now rather than be remembered. No one's trying to be remembered. The call to action is instant, so click now. So you have to make it visual and attractive. As mentioned, choose a platform and stick to it. Generally, I use Facebook for B2C and LinkedIn for B2B. Facebook can be really cheap for ads, as little as two pounds a day you can get results, but the platform's quite confusing and the reach has decreased. So if you're going for traffic, which is the most effective, make sure you have an awesome landing page and I'll cover that in a minute. You will need to test a lot of campaigns, ad sets and ad copy and creative, which can be expensive unless you get it right first time. You never know, no, you might be lucky or skilled, um, but the right mix can generate so many leads. 
Lookalike audiences are great. Use campaigns, not boosted posts. Never let Facebook automatically place. Manual placement is better. And I narrow that even further to only Facebook newsfeed. Don't let it put it everywhere because it'll waste your money. Right, LinkedIn for B2B. This is an unbelievably effective platform. InMail is the most expensive format because you pay per letter sent rather than impressions like other formats. Also, you get the same result just by connecting with someone and putting a little note in there. But you can target so specifically interests by group membership. It really is a fantastic advertising tool. I've personally seen great results from this in the past. Um, Eye-catching single image ads with benefits usually work really well and I haven't really used promoted posts. Um, Instagram for visual brands, it's B2C, it's a younger audience. So to target your audience, you want to think, where are they? You can do the research, it's out there for free, and you just target that platform. Twitter, you can target, for an example, an account's followers, but it's quite expensive because it is the whole world. So for the ad creative, it has to be visual. It can be video or still image. There's still no front run up, which is better. Have one call to action. The image must relate to the headline. It's okay to be conceptual. I use Canva, Photoshop, even Paint and PowerPoint. They're great. And it's okay not to have your logo because you want to excite curiosity. If people see the logo, they're like, mm, I, I know that. But if they don't see the logo, they're like, oh, that's such a nice picture. I just want to click it. Just trying to get them to click it. Um, a free asset is most popular. So get details and increase your database to contact them later and then form a relationship. Sometimes the best, so <laughs> best social advertising isn't paid. So Moon P, which offers unique cards, gifts and flowers went viral when it asked customers to stop uploading certain images to their cards. So does anyone know who this meme is? It's Leslie Note from Parks and Rec. It's an awesome program and memes are a fab way for brands to communicate. Moving on to landing pages. Good landing pages are a must if you wanna create conversions from paid advertising have one call to action. The button must make people want to click it. So it's got to be very prominent. Um, have a really, this is a quite a good example of a landing page. Um, load, there's lots of options for tools. So MailChimp is my favorite. It's free and super easy to set up, but there's also Insta page, unbounced lead pages, but have a benefit focused headline. Image must match the offer, not too much copy. Have one call to action, have a relevant offer. Have the button above the fold, so no scrolling, and remember, thank you. That would be my tips. Eventbrite is the best for events. Just uh, And just a reminder to pop your questions in the chat if you have any questions for me. And we're moving on to organic posts. So I'm going to talk about LinkedIn because it's my favorite platform. If you're going to concentrate on one platform, I would make it LinkedIn because it can do business and it's also your personal brand, unless you're running a consumer brand and you've got e-shop and things like that. Um, it's great for prospecting, for promoting, for generating inbound leads, for branding, for engagement, and for building relationships. It really is the full package. Um, it's about relation, sorry, that's my puppy. It's about relationships. Have a, have a good profile picture. Use the, banner, use the banner space. Make your headline as attention grabbing as possible and your headline makes you searchable. So use keywords. Try to say who you are as well as what you do. Um, and then moving on to the social selling index. I'm not sure you've probably seen this before. It's a free tool from LinkedIn. I can put, I'll pop the link. If you get the link from Sonia at the end, I will share this link with you. Um, it gives you an idea where you're ranked amongst your peers across a number of measurements. Um, it's free tool. I can share the link with you. Look out for the link in the chat and the slides as mentioned. Um, your profile. So complete all the sections. The about section is your time to shine. Putting time and effort into your profile will bring benefits and rewards. Try asking for testimonials too from friends and customers because it always sounds, praise sounds best when coming from someone else if you can. Company page. You can invite your contacts to follow your page and you can engage with the activity tab. It's not just about posting content. So you wanna do a follower attraction campaign basically. And you do that by the invite buttons here. And you see the activity up there to see all the mentions. Okay, so here are a few examples of posts I've done. Um, 
so what makes a post get noticed? I think if we're gonna narrow it down to three things, it would be tagging. Tag people in your posts, as many as possible. And people like it. And if they don't like it, they don't have to <laughs> react. Just tag people because lots of people like to be mentioned as well, if it's relevant, not just randomly. Um, and if you let them know you're tagging them as well and what your mission is, often they'll be really excited for you and get involved because that will get some engagement, but you need a team. Um, video. Video has amazing results that because people can get to know you and also LinkedIn ranks video quite highly. Also hashtags. So here are three public speaking hashtags that have enormous followers. So if you put these hashtags in your post, that is going to get posted on a wall where you might get potentially seen by a million and 22,000 followers. So I think that's quite a good thing. Um, if you have a link to an external thing like an event, try to put it in the comments, not in the post, because LinkedIn will de-promote the posts that have links in them. But it's the long way around. It does take extra time, but I think it's worth it. Um, I use Canva for photo editing. Better hurry up now. Searching and connecting. Okay, so this is about prospecting. LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. You can search by industry, company, or any keyword. You can search by location, company size. There's so many parameters. And when you're doing that, you can reach out to people. I always try to add value to someone's life. I don't just pitch at them and say, buy my stuff, because if someone does that to me, I don't like it. I'm going to make an effort to be useful and start a conversation and build a relationship. So personal message, mutual connections are great because you say, I noticed we had all these mutual connections, connections please connect with me. Um, it's about relationships. If someone messages you, message them back. Sounds obvious, but yeah, not everybody knows that. Oh. LinkedIn events. I'm not quite sure why that slide is not actually showing, but this is a game changer. So you can do this by going to your company page, creating an event, inviting people, your followers, and you can search by like industry, again, company, whatever you can search in there. It's fantastic. And anyone else can invite their contacts. So you can have speakers at an event and you can ask them to invite their contacts to the event. And the reach is exponential. And if you've got a nice banner and a good explanation, people are going to want to join. The events are a very good way to raise your profile. And I'm gonna be doing a talk about that on Saturday on the inspiring stage. So I hope you can make it. Um, video is amazing, but only if you do it right. So what are the tips? Phone on landscape, window in front, Try to be mid-frame and not have things growing out of your head like I believe the door is at the moment for me. That's not what to do. Slight, if you have the camera slightly pointing down from above, that's what news readers do. That's a good angle. Make it short. Raw is authentic. And YouTube is very good right now for reach. And onto the Q&A. Any questions? Thank you, Vanessa. We do have a few questions. Um, let me start from the beginning and, and please continue to add questions to the chat. But the first question we had was, what about Crello? Do you use Crello? Trello, is that Trello? Is that Trello for, for project management, Annalise, or is that Crello with a C? Do you want to unmute yourself? She can't unleash herself. Uh, I only know about Trello, not Crello. What about you, Vanessa? I have not heard of Crello, so I could not comment. If, if Annalise can unmute and, and explain what kind of a tool it is. Annalise, hello, thanks so much for joining and also your helpful tips on my website breaking about two weeks ago. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, sorry oh, yeah. about that. Uh, I couldn't uh, unmute myself, now I can't. Uh, perfect. So Crello, actually, it's a, it's a tool a bit like Canva. Canva. Mm -hmm. Okay, I must check it out. Thank you for that tip. It's, I do not. Uh, I just learned about that, but it's a it's a kind of the same, but at the same time different. So it might be easier for one person to use Canva and for the other one to use Crello. That is true. And if you're using Buffer, another thing that is great is Pablo because Pablo pushes it direct to Buffer. But I'm going to check out Crello. Thank you for that tip. You're welcome. Thank you. Fantastic. Another uh, another question we have, Vanessa, from Andy, it was uh, with Facebook ads. Oh, sorry, my screen just went. With Facebook ads, 
Actually, that question has gone off my screen. I'll come back to that. It says he loves LinkedIn. However, is it advantageous to pay? LinkedIn Sales Navigator, uh, it's super duper. And I have it because that's my job. I think it's like, it's a super duper version. You, the, the reality is that you can achieve similar results with searching in unpaid LinkedIn. But LinkedIn Sales Navigator allows, I think, very powerful lists and, and segmenting to be drawn. Not only, not, not necessarily for paid, but for, you know, manual offline contacting. I believe it's quite, it's, it's worth it for me, but it would depend on what you do and what you want to get out of it as well. You can feel free to please drop me a line at my email if you would like to me to look at your specific situation because it may not be necessary for what you're trying to achieve, but I have it because that's my, that's my job and I find it really good. I mean, there's a free trial as well. There's a 30 day free trial of Sales Navigator that you can try it. Um, but I guess the trick is about using it and I could probably take you through what I do as well. If you reach out to me. And Vanessa and everyone, I put a link uh, to Vanessa's slides on the chat. So do download the slide deck from, from there at any time. Thank you so much, Sonia. No worries. And um, Dave joined us late. Um, yes, Dave, you, you're very welcome to put your camera on. Uh, we always love to see people's faces as you were. And Vanessa, another question from Brian. Um, for a new club with zero promotional budget and limited social media skills, what would be the best thing to, do to attract guests and potential members? This is the, the magic bullet. It doesn't, I mean, <laughs> there's a, I think a comb you need to do a combination of everything. You can definitely do that for free if you've got some really motivated people. Uh, please attend my talk on Saturday because it will completely cover what you can do and how you can make it work. We can reach out to me and I can explain it, but I think events are going to be great. LinkedIn, obviously, some excited, energized team, team members, some really high profile speakers who will be willing to speak because the people love the Toastmasters brand. It's like IOD, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can make it happen. And I think it's it's gonna be good because just from my experience with Toastmasters, I mean, it's a huge organization. And it seems like there's a lot of demand for people who um, would like to connect and be part of a community that Toastmasters offers. Excellent, thank you. And Brian has been a, um, a recurring um, guest in our soiree. So thank you, Brian, for coming in and, and your interest. And another person who's been here more than once is Panos from Greece. And his question, Vanessa, is what would be the minimum viable PR strategy for a Toastmasters related event, which follows on from that answer that you gave? Interesting. Hello, very international audience. Oh, I, I do love Crete. Welcome, Panos. Thank you for joining. So mm, minimal, minimum viable PR strategy. I think find great speakers who are going, who have a profile and who are going to engage and give you time and energy because you're gonna, they're gonna help you get an audience. The more people you have talking about your event, that is the one key to success. It doesn't matter really. I mean, the queen, you could have the queen and that would be quite popular, but it doesn't really matter the profile of a person. That is not what matters. What's gonna matter is their social media profile and whether they're gonna help you promote, right? Because we have some very high profile speakers in IOD who have no social media profile and they don't sell out. But some people who have quite a high social media profile, a good title, really catchy title that is kind of controversial, poses a question, educational thought leadership. I mean, you know all that, that is going to get interest and people who are going to invite their people and do videos for you as well. Come on Saturday, this will explain everything. And on that point, as Svetlana was asking on Saturday, so Svetlana, this is um, a, a workshop that uh, Vanessa is going to give on that at the conference uh, on Saturday, the 1st of May, and she is uh, on the inspiring stage. So we've got four simultaneous stages. And um, if you haven't, if you haven't looked it up, um, Svetlana, do come and join us. I'll put the link to the conference and you can buy tickets there and see more information about Vanessa as well. Thank you. You're very welcome. And we have another question, Vanessa, from um, Shawan, and she's asking, how have you found LinkedIn stories? Are they useful 
Well, and what about Twitter fleet too? I don't know Twitter fleet. So let's go one at a time. LinkedIn stories first, please. What do you, what do you Hi. Hi, Shawan. Thank you so much for joining. Um, okay, so my experience with LinkedIn stories was that one day someone said to me, oh, you can make a story on LinkedIn. And I thought, why would anyone want to do that? And I can't remember ever, ever have a looked at one. I do look at my friend's stories on Instagram and also TikTok, or oh, I get out, I waste hours on TikTok. LinkedIn for stories, for me, I have had virtually no interaction. I have not seen any and I wondered why it was there. So I'm not sure how long that will last. But if you have had experience where it's been very successful for someone, I would love to hear about it because maybe that's something we all need to be looking at. Usually LinkedIn deploys features and nobody knows. And then someone just starts talking about it and like, oh, that's amazing. Like the QR code scanning thing. You just meet people and then it goes viral and the LinkedIn events as well. Stories, mm, I'm not sure whether that's gonna go viral, but I mean, prove me wrong. And then also, so Twitter, is that Twitter one you were talking about, like the clubhouse one, right? No, she was mentioning Twitter fleet, which I haven't come across. Twitter fleets. Have I been hiding in a dark room? What is Twitter fleets? Come on, do you want to unmute yourself and tell us more about that? I believe that's um, the stories version for Twitter. So it's the fleeting thing. So they, I, think they, I think they call it fleets. Interesting, I have not come across it. Yeah, it's another thing where I think they're obviously copying Instagram and yeah, just wondered what your thoughts were, but obviously you haven't heard of it about it, so never mind. <laughs> it's not. It's not like that. I haven't heard of it. It's not good because I just concentrate my efforts, right? So, for every, everything that I talk about is just what I've experienced. The what you have to think about is ROI. When you do social, how much return are you going to get for your time investment? And I've never seen a LinkedIn story. I've never seen a Twitter fleet but I do hear people on Clubhouse and I do can't get off TikTok. So I think the, the, the really popular things take off. But if you have heard of someone having massive success with it, what I would say is try it, see how it goes. You know, it's all about impressions, engagement. Sometimes you won't be able to quantify with a sale, with a contract, but you might see people reaching out to you or you might see impressions in, in the actual stats. And that is a great segue, Vanessa, to a, an earlier question from Andy with Facebook paid ads. So he's asking, with Facebook paid ads, can you end up having to pay a lot if successful? Um, he's, he's talking about the, the, the charge per click. Yes, absolutely. It can become extremely expensive. So, but if you, you can do two ways, you can do small experiment, two pounds a day, see how it goes. And you might have some big wins, just do that. Or you can get the help. If you've got a bit of a budget, get the help of a Facebook person who's going to help you, you will spend more, but you will also find out the most effective things. Something I must warn you about is in my personal experience, Facebook, after you've stop the campaign and it's a very confusing platform so you've got to get your head around the platform you've got you know ad sets campaigns ad creative the copy the image it's it can be difficult to keep you to to get a hold of it but it starts to run ads when you haven't told it to so i had to remove my card from facebook and my client has just got a uh, quite a massive bill this month not because of me when we stopped advertising months ago because facebook restarted the ads without without anyone telling it to that is something to be aware of and that's only in my opinion has what has happened so yeah it can get really expensive but I mean try something for two pounds a day with a look-alike audience on a campaign very just very narrow Facebook news feed and see how it goes a great, a great advice. And let's go back to a previous question from Mansuri Chai and is asking, is Clubhouse, that like you mentioned earlier, is Clubhouse something we should try? Everybody's talking about it. Uh, there's a lo lot of, you know, super popular people on it. I think it creates amazing conversations and people get addicted. It's like an, an addiction app like TikTok. So check it out. I think, yeah, some of my clients are on there. They really love doing the clubhouses and you can actually just do one yourself 
or you can join them and, and find thought leadership and useful learnings about so many different topics. I think it's a very interesting app. Excellent. I find it, it's a little bit like podcast, isn't it? Yes, like radio, yes. Yes, very good. We don't have any other questions, but do you, I think we had time for one more, a couple more questions. So do you, uh, oh, Ali has got one more. Would you, you would like to know how to get backlinks being with the IOD as well as Toastmasters? Great. So are you, is, hello, is there, okay, so basically, are you, would you be trying to get Ali, hello, thank you for asking the question. Are you trying to get backlinks to your Toastmasters site or to your business site? Andy, do you want to unmute yourself and, and clarify? Sure, thank you for my business site. Your business site. Okay, so um, it's, it's tough going. I'm not a PPC or SEO expert. My best advice would be if you, it's a very, it's very time consuming to build relationships. So you can write blogs and, you know, write content and ask other people to publish them and put your website as a backlink. It's a lot of reaching out, I think. Um, it's about partners, I think. So if you have any partners that would be willing to, people you work with, collaborate with anyone you've done work for free for favors for you can ask them that is a labor intensive uh job i think and i am in no way a website expert but that is my experience with it sorry i couldn't be more help i think john is agreeing with you on the comments he's saying that make sure that he's in the same context so that, it, that there's a linkage as you were a proper linkage can I ask a question before we, we drop, which is something that always um, intrigues me. What is the best time of the day or the week to post on LinkedIn? Thank you so much for your question, Sonia. I think Tuesdays, uh, Tuesdays are the best time, mm. I think, Tuesdays. Yeah, it's just, it just, things just go a bit more viral. And in the morning, I always post around 10 o'clock or failing that Thursdays and then Wednesdays, Mondays and Fridays, I don't really see things have as much get picked up as much. Fantastic. Well, this has been ever so interesting, Vanessa. I'm sure the, the audience is agreeing with me and I'm going to just re-add the link to the slide deck so that you can look through Vanessa's deck and, and get all these learnings again. And as Vanessa was saying, do come and join us on Saturday. What time is it, Vanessa, on Saturday? is 4.55. Thank you so much, Sonia. And thank you so much to everybody who attended. Yeah, thank you, Sonia. It's been, it's been great to work with you.